Like a Philip K. Dick story that was deleted, we saw Free Jack, so you know what that means. Baby in his belly, rock a rhinestone vest while I'm whipping Justin to Kelly. Or maybe see a burlesque show with Nick Crow and take a boat with speed to hitting cruise control. J Man, Big Paul, and the beautiful Jewel. Gonna take you from the groove all the way to the room. Ran the games of Street Fighter, helped to blow off steam. Just a sucker plus the odd life of Timothy Green. Shock Native and Bird Demic, how we staying alive. They call it in the badass, and he's on the line. Cranking 88 minutes, cause they cool as ice. Cause a bad Jim Varney looking kind of nice. Paul and June getting literal, Jason is getting laid June is making sure all the monkey shots getting paid They judge a bunch of movies while they're making the grade Here's a real question for you, how did this get made? Hello people of Earth! And hello people of New York City! We are here and we are so excited to be a town hall part of the New York Comedy Festival to talk to you about a very important movie. Free Jack, it is our future. Why do we pick Free Jack in New York? Well, because there's no better New York movie than Free Jack. This movie lives and breathes New York. It's like a Woody Allen movie where New York is a character. New York is Free Jack. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to talk to me tonight about this movie, my co-host, please welcome, Jason Manzoukas! <laughs> What's up, jerks? <laughs> New York City! How you feeling? How's that balcony? That's right. I tried to, I tried to make the balcony tops off exclusive. Shot down. <laughs> they are bottoms off, though. That's the cool thing. It's, it makes people more comfortable because you can't readily see it. Um, Jason, Paul, Free Jack. Who Free Jack. I will tell you that seeing this commercial on TV as a child, I thought I was in store for a race car movie of some kind. I thought that race car driving Why? was to... Well, the Why? commercial None that of I... those, neither Free nor Jack connotes a race car. Oh, I, because he's a race car driver. Yes, Got I it. think... Um, when I was a kid in the commercials, I didn't see this movie in the theater, thank God. I, I, uh, but when I saw the commercials, it felt like he's a race car driver and he's in the future. And I was like, oh, when I was first watching it, I was like, oh, well, clearly they're going to use his body as a race car driver. No. You thought they were going to turn his, oh, to like race in the future. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I assumed at the beginning. I was like, oh, there must be some sort of future race. They need him to win. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Some sort of master race. that they're trying to get to for some sort of, I don't know, like final solution to a problem. <laughs> that stuff both sounds familiar, though. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, a, this is an interesting movie. Uh, Mick is Jagger... it, though? <laughs> is it interesting? I'm I mean, not I know sure. For, I know for a lot of people... You know, they always say, well, I would love to see Mick Jagger and Anthony Hopkins, Sir Anthony Hopkins, share the screen. And you finally get that here. Our guest co-host, you know her from episodes like Pluto Nash. She is uh, fantastically funny and uh, amazing actress, comedian. Please welcome Jessica St. Clair. Oh, a yes. high kick. A high kick. For those of you listening, Jessica just performed a high kick on the level of Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's all right. When, when uh, earlier, when we showed the Jean-Claude Van Damme buns thing, 
And he was doing the splits. You said, I can do that. So, if you wouldn't mind. Come on, man. Do not be... I don't want to make everybody feel pressure. bad they can't do it here. <laughs> also, I don't want to break my vagina wide open. <laughs> yeah. Because that was what would happen. We Who knows? Did, Who knows we, what would come out? You don't want anything to fall Who out or, or jump in. <laughs> Why would you try to jump in? I'm not saying me, but you I, would. Get, I guarantee you one of these weirdos would be like, fuck it, I'm getting Woo! in there. Ooh, I want to come out like a little baby. <laughs> I want... I want Jesse to be my mommy. And then you would have to take care of the audience. I'd have member. to care for it. For 18 years. Yeah. Until Jessica, I was 36. I know that you have strong opinions about Ugh. movies that take place in the future. Uh, Specifically dystopian sick. futures. Sick. They make I you sick. I knew it. I, you know, you guys gave me a couple movies to watch this weekend, and I thought one of them is going to be in the goddamn future, and there's going to be trash can fires and people with their boobs out hanging out of windows and stupid cars in this and instance dumb the, haircuts the boobs are all painted which was weird yeah i yeah. didn't care for that fucking weird you know what Nobody, i don't you know what i don't want on my boobs paint. a bunch of fucking paint yeah exactly tell it to mystique i don't um, like unattractive you know what i will tell it to mystique <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mystique. Mystique. Yeah. <laughs> the actual Mystique, not the actress that played her in the movie. <laughs> Just somebody morphs into like a blue creature in the front the row. Actual <laughs> Raven, actual Mystique. Doesn't matter. Let's keep moving. <laughs> uh, tonight we have a very special guest. Uh, she is amazing. She is an author, wrote a book called You Can't Touch My Hair and Other Things I Still Have to Explain. <laughs> She is one of the co-hosts of the Two Dope Queens podcast, also the So Many White Guys podcast. Please welcome Phoebe Robinson. Woo! Yes. Yes. Woo! Welcome, Phoebe. Thank you. So excited to have you I'm here. I'm pumped. I should have worn my shapewear. I didn't prepare for this. <laughs> Got a little poof here. A little foo baby. So do I? And it's cut, I feel like I it's need to let a button behind, open. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like but then what do you desk? bastards are trying to crawl in my bed? <laughs> <laughs> Close one for business. Lucky, one lucky audience member <laughs> is going to get to crawl into St. Clair's vagina <laughs> and live there for one day. <laughs> And then we are going to deliver you tomorrow like a baby, <laughs> swaddle you, sleep train you. That's right. You're like talking about things that like really rich men on the Upper East Side do. Like, like yeah. ooh, I want to be swaddled. I want to be swaddled. Yep, and sleep trained. Phoebe, yes. Free Jack, is this a type of movie that you're interested in? Or where does no. this fall on your scale of, of movies? Do you like future movies? Do you like... I don't... I, I like future movies, but I was watching this and I was like, this got made so easily and we still don't have like a Harriet Tubman biopic. Like, I don't know <laughs> exactly. what we're doing. Yes. Yeah. Come Where's on. my Eleanor Roosevelt film? Right? Right? Come on. Come on now. This movie was made in 1992, which even seems like, wow, this, it feels more 80s than oh, that. Yeah. I yeah. am shocked to find that out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is... I, <laughs> I would... I would have put this at like an 84 yeah. max. Yeah. But I do this... believe that until 1994, no one asked questions. It was like, here's a script. Okay, we'll make it. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. it was, it was no, there was no, there was like, yeah, yeah, we're making these shitty yeah. movies. It just kind of happened. Yeah. But I, I started, I got anxious during the credits because the names that were being thrown out there were very incon incongruous. Is that the yeah. word? It was Emilio Estevez. Okay. Okay, for the Men time. Men at Work. Okay. Mighty like Ducks. That. No? Yes? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, The Breakfast Club. Great, The Breakfast Club. Mick Jagger, weird. Okay. Rene Russo. And okay. then Anthony Hopkins. Great. That's fucking weird. Yeah. You should have known that that was a bad stew. Yeah, yeah that's a bad episode of The Love Boat. I mean, yeah, that exactly. is... Those uh, people do not go that, together. On that, I will disagree. That is <laughs> that might be the great greatest episode. episode of The Love Boat. I would say it's the greatest episode of Fantasy Island. Bad episode of Love Boat. <laughs> this movie could have been Fantasy Island. <laughs> 
Um, no, so, no, 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 no. Guy with one. Uh, let's just sit with this. Yeah. <laughs> let's just enjoy this silence together. So the movie. <laughs> Uh, was made in 1992, but it takes place in 2009. And right out of the gate, I'm like, I feel uncomfortable. I don't like Emilio's relationship with Rene Russo what? at all. I no. thought it was so cute. It you was liked so. It. I thought it was cute. I was like, y'all, yeah, she's showing thigh meat. She's like into him. I, I liked it. Her I, bangs are bigger than his head okay. in the first scene. Yeah. And her gigantic scrunchie. Yeah. And I'm not interested in that mommy relationship. Yeah. She's a full head taller than him. Yeah. yeah. And she's in flats. Yeah, and I, and I think at a certain point he might have come out of her vagina. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, what I thought was interesting too was clearly at one point they did reshoots and they didn't care to match her hair. Like wow. when, because in the first part of the movie you see her and she's... And she's got something going on with these bangs. And then later on, in the same scene, she's wearing a hat. And it's, com- it's almost as if she went to, like, got her hair done between Emilio, like, leaving her and Sherm watching him at the track. <laughs> um, but no effort to fix continuity. Well, and then 18 years later, she looks exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, yeah. You know? No one she, aged. She you know, ages. She's, she's meant to have aged 18 yeah. years. Yes. She's got good genes. I was into it. I'm team Rene Russo all the way. By the way, I, I am also, I like yeah. Rene Russo. I didn't like, I didn't think that she was good enough for, or I didn't oh. think that Amelia was good enough for her. Okay. Wait, yeah. Like, I okay. think she's, yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I was fully on yeah. board for like her being like over him. Yeah. Yes. When he gets to the future, I feel like she should have been like, well, I'm in love with like a normal person now. Yeah. Not like the young boy that you still are. Yeah. Like their relationship in the future is arguably inappropriate. Yeah. No, I think it's okay because he's like early 20s. I just hate it when they reunited on the bed and she was like, I'm older now. And it's like, fuck you. (laughs) But like, I think we can all agree the idea of like an older woman and a younger man is gross. Yeah. (laughs) And if you reverse it, like an older man and a younger woman, Cute. Hot, cool, hot, hot. very cool, so hot. ladies. <laughs> but there was a line that he said to her, like in that bedroom scene, yeah. where he was like, "What happened to us? Oh, the eighteen years that you weren't here—that kind of happened to us." Like he seemingly has no when like, they are ha- to when it. they are having sex in that scene. Correct me if I'm wrong. One of the things they flash to is his car exploding. <laughs> Was that a flash? So while they're, I think, while they're having sex, one and or both of them are are coming while thinking about his death. (laughs) That is the only uh, assumption I can make due to that particular bit of visual juxtaposition. (laughs) I I feel like they were like, we spent so much money blowing up this car, we're going to cut to it at least eight times. Yeah, half Like, we we got to get our money's worth on one special effect. Like, because they cut to it, like, even at the end when he's merging brains with Anthony Hopkins. uh, On the the giant jack? Yeah. The giant toy of a jack? Like, there was an episode, I'm I'm dating myself and saying that, I watched this episode of Happy Days one time, where, like, Mork and the Fonz like ch- changed brains, and the instrumentation in that episode looked more than like that. futuristic than <laughs> yeah. what was going on oh, yeah. in this movie that took place in 1992. Um, but like even in that sequence, he only flashes to such a small part of his life. The car crash being a majority of yeah. it, yeah. and it's like no no images from him being a child. It was just like <laughs> they only didn't want to the shoot 72 it. Two hours. They didn't want to shoot it. They only he could only have flashbacks. To things we've already seen. They should have just put a onesie on him and I would have bought him as a baby because he's so <laughs> fucking tiny. Stop, exp- stop <laughs> explaining your sexual fantasies to us. <laughs> Are you saying that Emilio Estevez, full size Emilio, should yeah. be in a onesie? Yes. Yeah, I love it. And I would buy it as a baby. I also would have loved it if there was just a quick shot of Charlie Sheen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, speaking of just things that didn't really work here, I'm going to go out and say that Mick Jagger, not a helmet guy. 
I, 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 Interesting. I, I don't yes. think he can pull yes. off a helmet. I love that you that's your takeaway from the performance. The helmet's not right, but everything else, great. Oh, the performance besides the helmet yeah. was uh, on, on the It moment. was reminiscent of when Mike Dukakis wore a helmet on that tank. No. And every, because because it's also similarly little guy, big helmet. Yeah. It's like uh, kind of like incongruous. Yeah, yeah. You know what? If you listen, because Mick Jagger doesn't have a lot of lines, right? Which is fine. And I think he does have a great stage presence. Okay, I think we can all agree on that. But most of the audio in his scenes is the sound of leather on leather. (laughs) It's just like squeak, 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 squeak. And then he's like, I'm going to get you. Squeak. (laughs) I mean, he, he is wearing... Like, I don't, I don't think that he was costumed as much as, like, I'm like, if you told me every outfit in this movie he wore, like, on, like, the Voodoo Lounge tour, I'm like, Yeah, he yeah. brought it. Yeah. 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 That's, like, Mick Jagger's wardrobe. Like, yeah. he didn't seem futuristic, because I'm like, yeah, he wears all that leather yeah. all the time. <laughs> but maybe that lapel is a little bit different, but besides that. But I found it weird. Like, he was the bad guy. Uh, Whose he, bad guy was he? He was he working works. for Anthony Hopkins, yeah, Hopkins, number two. Yes. For Hopkins, because Hopkins he, calls him off after he... For Mike Ehrmantraut from Better Call Saul. Yeah. Okay, so he was working for, what's his name, James... James Jonathan Banks. Jonathan Banks. Who is yeah. also working for Hopkins, So right? they're yes. both working for Hopkins, but Jonathan <laughs> Banks is making a power grab. Yes, he's going Because rogue. at a certain point, Jonathan Banks' guys were all in blue suits and, Mick, and had laser guns, and Mick Jagger's group had, like, normal guns and were in black suits. That's right. And I was like... Who are these fucking other guys? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought we had, like, one bad guy, and now I, 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 don't, I don't know, know. what to do. Well, there's a lot <laughs> that's, going that's on that I think is unsaid, because, like, yes. Mick Jagger to me and Emilio, they have this, like, adversarial relationship, but they've never met. You know, it's like, aha, uh-huh, what do you think now for uh, Furman or whatever they name? Furlong. Furlong. Isn't Sorry, that furlong? what happens when you get laid off a government job? Furlough? Is that furlough? Furlough. furlough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, but his name is Furlong. Furlong. Yeah. Like, okay. They also, at one point, make the joke of both his name being Furlong and then the word for, the words Furlong, which I thought was really weird. Like, you won't be Furlong for long. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think that was some version of the joke. I hated this movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just wrote down... I just wrote different. down, like, this is your two lead characters. Like, it's uh, <laughs> Vincendic and Furlong. It's like, oh, these are the, not, like... The nope. worst names. They're yeah. hard to pronounce. I and could... I felt like Mick Jagger was just doing an impression of Fred Armisen impersonating him. Like, it made <laughs> no sense. I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, well, this is, you, you know, by the Mick... way, bringing this up, um, Avril Halley, who pulls all of our clips, found this great interview of Mick Jagger that explains... <laughs> why he did this movie. For the money! And I will say that this is, I think, again, I think there was a time before publicists came in to be like, oh, no, no, no. No. (laughs) We're not going to ask that. Um, And this falls in that, like, right at the end of it. So, uh, and I'll say this, the clip works in a wave. You'll think it's over, and then it's going (laughs) to pop in for the end. Here we go. Oh. In over 20 years, but he told Garrett Glazer that his decision to do it was rather spur of the moment. Right now I'm working on a solo album project, and just before that started, they said, we would like to do this feature, and I said, let me see it. So they said, well, I've got to know, we've got to know by next week, because it starts shooting in three weeks. So I said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so probably if I had six months to think about it, I probably would have turned it down and said, oh, no, it's not quite the one I want. Oh, Emilio was sh- uh, What was it like working with him? Oh, sh- I enjoyed working with him. I thought it was a really good fun guy. We went out a few times, went to a few strip clubs in Atlanta. <laughs> That's what people do in Atlanta. He's like, yes. perfectly okay, darling. I'm off to the strip club after work. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I wait. I so he that. went to he went to strip clubs in Atlanta. In Atlanta with Emilio Estevez. He Tabella. likes he likes the dark chocolate. That's tight. That's tight. That's, yeah. cool. That's cool. Mick that's cool. Mick Jagger's like we went to Magic City. I yeah. made it rain. <laughs> we went to the Claremont and did all that nonsense. It was pretty extensive. Now that I know it was shot in Atlanta, I don't know why it makes me even sadder for Mick because he signs onto a movie. Right. He has to be in Atlanta. It's all night shoots. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? And that's right. why he never did another movie. That's like he never appeared in another film. Is I that just, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't have the research in front of me, but I don't think so. Yeah. That's I think, it for him. I think he did well, one I other think, movie. Well, I think, in all honesty, I think it's obvious, and we can all agree, I suspect everybody in this room, he kind of nailed it and doesn't <laughs> ever to need again. to perform again. Yeah. You know, it's like, I think Daniel Day-Lewis is currently like, okay, this new movie, this PTA movie, is it. I'm done So right. This is as good as it's going to get. I can retire. Mm -hmm. Mick Jagger watches this movie and he's like, fucking crushed it. <laughs> there is right. no role greater than uh, Vicendic. I will I just can't. keep making very mediocre Rolling Stones records. What the fuck are you talking about, <laughs> man? Their latest stuff is better than any of that early stuff. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, there, there's like one thing in this movie, uh, there's a lot of things, but the cliche that I always love is when someone comes in from another time and it's nighttime, they don't <laughs> recognize that the world has changed around them. Yeah. Like, Marty McFly does that in like Back to the Future 2. It's like, his house has like bars on it and he's like, huh. Just walks in like, there's, and, like, and this and in his mind, Emilio's mind is like, I left my apartment this morning, and there weren't trash can fires, and my building wasn't burnt out. But again, it's nighttime, so I'm not really pulling it all in. I've done a lot of stuff at night. I am not losing all my surroundings. Like, if I came home and my house is like slightly on fire, and like, I don't remember that graffiti on my front door. Like, I wouldn't be like, oh, I guess it has kids, you know? Like, and, and but like when he goes home. Like, he's running through the street. <laughs> People are shooting at him? Yeah. yeah. He is, like, he, he, wait, does he first find Amanda Plummer's nun? Or no, after? I think he goes no, home he goes, first. He goes, he goes, Julie goes, first. First? He goes okay. to Julie's. Yes. Is that her name? Julia? Well, that's come, Julie? Yeah, that's his house, yeah. I was yeah. convinced when the door opened it was going to be an old Rene Russo and old lady Me makeup. Too. And I was very happy that wasn't the case. <laughs> It was just this all black couple like, you a free jack. And I was like, ah, oh, Jesus. Ah, oh, Jesus. You got to work in the title like that. You a free jack. Oh, fuck. By the way, they have to work in the title so many times because the title don't make any fucking sense. Can you? Like, yeah, it should be is, like, you're a body jacker. Like, body jack? jacker is a like thing. A hijack, free jack. You've hijacked what a is body. It? Yeah, it's, what is, it's like they, they bring people at the moment they're going to die to the future right. so that the rich can transfer their consciousness yes. into those bodies uh, for to gain immortality-ish, right? But what does that well, mean? You never age? But why age? are they free? Is well, it because they're not I mean, paying for they, it? Like, but first of all, they're called, like, the free jacking, I guess, is like you're, f you're, you're free, free jacking, you're, you're like, it's, you're freely taking someone's life? You guys, you guys, just stop. It's not worth <laughs> it's not, it. It's not worth it, y'all. Um, no, 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 no. We're going to get to the bottom of this. So, I'm Anthony Hopkins. I'm like, okay, I'm dying. I need a young body to transfer my consciousness into. I like that so idea. So I can continue to live. Got it. Right. What's that person called that we're bringing from the past till now? Okay. Huh. Free Jack? Why? Don't know. It just came to me. It should Done. be like it should be like free lifer, body jack. Like, yeah. It should be called body jack. How about a, like, how about a new guy? <laughs> new guy. How about Boy. like how about like a uh, blank slate? Yeah. How about tabula rasa? But all like, right. Well, as we're figuring out that, why is Mick Jagger's people called bone jackers? Why are that they called bone crazy. jackers? They're, they're not jacking. They're, I mean, for a brief moment, I thought they were called Bone Jaggers. <laughs> bone Jagger. I, That's a good name to and call somebody. I was furious. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, fuck you, movie. I already hate you. <laughs> and now you've got something called Bone Jaggers that Mick Jagger runs? Fuck you. By the way, I would have loved that in the future, Mick Jagger is a, a bone jagger. Jack, like he was like, yeah. I left music behind after my solo album, <laughs> and now I'm just this. I'm this guy. But I thought body jacker again. That's what he should be. He's the yeah. body jacker. Like he, you're yeah. hijacking someone's body. Yeah, yeah. body jack. That can works I, better than yeah. jack. Can I just ask a question though? Because so, but okay. that also has like vaguely sexual connotations to a it. Bone jacker. Yeah, and yeah. A I want a bone jacker. Oh to man. You. Bone like jacker she... is bone jacker is much more sexual than yeah, body, body jack. Yeah, body jack. I'm like, I get it. I thought Emilio's name was gonna be Jack, uh -huh. and then oh. it was Alex, and I was like, I'm immediately like thrown for a loop. Like yeah. I had to recover for several. And minutes. everybody knows. Everybody knows because those people that he goes to the apartment to find, they're like, 
you're a free jack. So that's something that exists enough. Like, he, we, do we ever meet another free jack? No, but it's, it seems like this is the first time a free jack has gone wrong. Yes. It's so why do they want to kill you, though? They want to just they, capture They need the body. They, yeah. But why does... So, for instance, the, the couple that says, you're a free jack, get out of here. Why don't... Why do they want to kill... Why don't they want to have any association with him? Because people are no doubt coming for him, probably. Yeah, if yeah. they give him a big He's hide probably him. bringing yeah. trouble. I think you're probably told, like, you can't hang with free jackers. All right. <laughs> There's a... I, I mean, look... Know. We're filling a lot of holes here. It's... We, I mean, it, 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 like, to me, I feel like it is like that future jargon that someone's like, yeah, yeah, free jack. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, got it. Like, you know, it's like, control, alt, save. You know, it's like, we got it. It's good. But what, what made, what made it hard... Let the eggheads figure this out. What made it hard was that, like, I, it, it was that, what's his name? Jonathan Banks had his own army that was called something else. And so they were constantly all showing... It was very muddy to me because they were all constantly showing up at all the same fights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't tell, like, like Mick Jagger's guys were shooting uh, Jonathan Banks' guys, and I was like, I think they're working for the same people? I don't know. I didn't like this movie. Um, <laughs> no. There was also, talking about weird names, the spiritual switchboard. Yeah. Which... Got a lot of questions about this. Yeah. <laughs> so the spiritual switchboard is, is literally a place... Uh, where I guess your body is held in spiritual stasis? Or I guess... You can switch so minds? Yeah, That's so I where guess the you minds would bring are a free jack, You'd bring yeah. a brain-dead free jacker in there, yeah. and then you make them touch the jack. Oh, maybe the giant jack is it's, a free jack. Yeah. No! Holy Wait. shit. <laughs> Guys. That or the cost, or that would be like whoa. the art department's like, uh, free jack. Uh, make it a big it a jack. jack. <laughs> no, I think that's, a, that's why it's in the shape of a jack. That's yeah. fucking so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's as, that, this is like as revelatory as the Rudy and uh, Reindeer, Reindeer game. Games <laughs> reveal. That is, if that's why it's in the shape of a jack, I'm now incensed. <laughs> <laughs> um, Full disclosure, my computer ran out of power right after Anthony Hopkins said I did it because I was in love with you, which I thought, oh, I get that. Can you fast forward, Paul, to the end where we but see the But then you jag? told me yeah. nothing else happens that is of, of interest after that, and that it is... turns out the entire movie comes together in a gigantic jack, so fuck you. Well, I mean, the free jack happens, and then this scene happens after the free jack. You no longer need it here, asshole. The canvas is no more. Wait. That's the jack. There's the jack. Oh, it's been blown up. It's been blown up. Nice try, Mark. But I made it. I completed the transfer. Would you give me that shit? Shoot him, Vicendic. Tried to assassinate me. <laughs> Take orders from a free jack? Is he McCandless? Damn it, of course I'm McCandless. Could be. We've completed transfers in that time, and we've had them take longer. I don't know. He is lying. You check his ID number. You check his personal ID number. Only McCandless would know that. What the fuck <laughs> is going on? This is so stupid. Six. <laughs> <laughs> what? Correct. Wait, I don't... Six. <laughs> His person, and I know, I do know, it, moments later he does say some more numbers, but when he said six and Mick Jagger said correct, I almost jumped out a window. I was like, you fucking movie just ruined my life. What's his personal ID number? In the future, six. Yes. By the way, also... Loving, <laughs> loving the choice in that scene where Emilio is kind of doing a British accent, but kind of not. Yeah. Like, it's like walking a line. Like I'm, I'm, at, I'm affecting something. Right. But you're not gonna be able to figure it out exactly. But if you jumped in someone else's body, you wouldn't just bring your accent with you. Yeah, it makes no <laughs> Wait, sense. Wait, so in that scene, is he in someone else's? 
is who? Oh well, that all right. So oh. you think he is, so and then this is the you final scene. You told me scene. nothing happens. You said, don't worry about it. Nothing <laughs> happens. I thought it would be better for if this to happen. If I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I chose the show. <laughs> so this is uh, how the movie ends. Oh, by the way, why are they in an antique car? <laughs> I mean, there's... What, 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 why? What the fuck is that about? There's so much stuff going on with this. And they're also dressed old-timey. It's so stupid. And the, and the, you know, the driver of the car was also like in an old-timey outfit as yeah. well. Uh, here we go. Alex, is that you? Nibble my ear. Ew! 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 Uh. Wait a minute. How'd you get the ID number right? Ew! He didn't. I lied. Close. The fuck out of here. What? Are we really gonna do this? Stranger things have happened. Now come on, buckle up. Let's see what this baby will do. <laughs> Not much. How dare you? And Not much, because how... it's a very old car. How dare you? <laughs> And by the way, that's the way the movie ends. Hey, I just want to say this. The audacity to think that Nibble on My Ear was so important to the audience <laughs> to fucking bring it back at the end. Like, see it, nice button. We all get it. No. Wait, wait, wait. I would have loved it if he was like, if, if he was like, uh, you're dumped. <laughs> you're dumped. You're too old for me. It's gross. It's gross. <laughs> Like, I just won. I'm like, uh, I'm in the future now. I got a lot of options. You're dumped. I got shit going on. Uh, you know, I'm a free jack. Uh, la you know, ladies love a free jack. Why is, why is Mick Jagger their friend now? I, that, why? Well, that's, why? The rela that's why? the relationship that makes no sense. Yeah. They're adversarial, like, aha, you're a good... Comp like, but there's no, there's no basis to why they're against each other, why they're for each other. I get why he says, I get, I can understand the logic of saying, Emilio Estevez says the number and he says he's right so they can shoot Jonathan Banks. Right. Got it. Okay. Because that's his main competitor at right. that point. But <laughs> why keep these two dildos alive? <laughs> why not just kill them as well? And because seize he, power. Because he showed him humanity. Yeah. In this future world, people kill all the time. And Emilio was like, you know what, buddy? I'm not going to kill you. And then... Wait, Mick, Emilio could have killed he, Mick? Yeah. yeah. And this, yeah. That's like, why Mick Jagger does that thing. He's like, I'm going to give you a five-minute head start. And then starts counting by seconds. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah. He's, he's like, one Mississippi, one, two one Mississippi, Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. He's just I'm counting like, to 300 <laughs> with his hands over his eyes. I was oh, like, his whole team was lost respect for him. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, all I want in this movie is for this five minutes to be in real time. Yeah. <laughs> 333 Mississippi. Mississippi. 334 Mississippi. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. I told them I'd give them five, <laughs> five minutes. minutes. Um, like, I also wrote down, like, this is like, I wrote down that this movie felt like every, every scene was like, someone off camera was like, you know what, don't do it at full speed. We'll just do it, like, just say the lines. Right. Just say the lines. We're just going to, like, rehearse it. We're just going to rehearse yeah, it. Yeah, you guys had a long night at Temptations. <laughs> you know, Mick is scratching, and we're not it sure. Just, it all just seems, like, sleepy. I mean, yeah, it, it does. Maybe that's what it is. The nights at strip clubs with Mick Jagger, like, <laughs> come to... Come to set a little punchy. like A little loose. <laughs> um, I will tell you this. 40% of the movie was reshot. What? What? Yeah. So you're telling me there's a worse version of this movie. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> that exists. Not worth it. No. Um, <laughs> the movie had a terrible test screening. And Emilio said that the director focused too much on action. So they brought in the producer to add more character and humor, and they wind up, they wind up reshooting 40% of the movie. 40% of the 
and that's and this producer who didn't go on to direct anything else after that. <laughs> uh, that's what he did. Forty percent. That is such a waste of money. Just be like, you know what? Let's cut our losses. Just release it. Yeah, it's over. Yeah, and by the way, what's so wrong about action? Like, like that seems to me like okay. Like, oh, the movie was all action. Okay, I'm but, down with it. I will say this. I didn't buy Emilio as an action star. No. So when he kept running, I'm like, that's not him running. That's he not doesn't you. seem like a He's tough too guy frail. at all. No. He also never seemed really scared. Yeah. He never, like when he's, he's supposed cocky. to, when he's supposed to be like, what's going on in the world? Instead of being like, really, he's kind of like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. As if like he came home and his roommates had like rearranged the furniture. Yeah. yeah. Like, Everything, his level is that level of like, hang on. He's like that guy you break up with because you're just like, I just want to see some life. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And? And what? Nothing. Nothing. No life from exactly. him. He's like, I get it. Yeah. But <laughs> the guy that I want to see a whole movie about is Boone. Rene Russo's bodyguard. Driver, yeah. always in a turtleneck. That he guy's so the best. Great. Lethal weapon, die hard. Yep. Kills it. He fucking carries a samurai sword and yes. a machine gun. Yeah, that I guy's was, the I best. I was very confused where that samurai sword came from yeah. and when he did the training for that move. That was fucking insane. He, he was shot. Then they, they take a moment. Like, they really, like, the camera's like, let's enjoy this moment where you massacre someone. Yeah. Like, and he just takes out that sword. He's like, Ugh! and you yeah. feel it plunge right. in to this dead man. I love that guy. Boone. I would have watched a whole movie about that guy. Me too. And so much more than Emilio Estevez. Boone did do one suspect thing, which was like, he held his gun up, like, in the, like his arm was like, like that. I feel like that's not a good position. Like, if you're like... Someone can get it out of Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. should maybe be like, like this, yeah, you know? Because yeah. you'd be like... It just seems like an odd. It just seems yeah, like an yeah. odd position. But you know what? He he's the fucking best. Can I, I, he's directing himself in these. In these but scenes, let me I'm pretty let sure. me ask you this because this is really confused me. So he is guarding Rene Russo. Yes. Who is working for Anthony Hopkins? But right. she doesn't realize that Anthony is bad news bears. Okay. Right. Because so aren't isn't every single character in the movie for with him. the exception of Emilio Estevez yes working for Anthony Hopkins <laughs> yes. no matter what, <laughs> what what uniforms they're wearing no matter who they're fighting no matter what's going on they're all on the same side some guys are except on, for him yes some guys are on the books yes. some guys are off the books yes right. they, yeah they're all their communication their phone tree is terrible yeah. <laughs> they're not communicating well at all they're like no. shooting each other and instead you'd be like wait 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 same side same side let's yeah. team up we can get them if we team up no we're gonna massacre each other okay cool fine <laughs> it's like playing like a multiplayer like halo game or something it's like we're all on the same team but yeah. then you're getting a lot of friendly fire Why? Um, what was up with the suicide i wrote that down what is that a billboard that just advertises Six suicide, suicide. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was like maybe well, like a suicide hotline or what? something. It but was, it just felt it was or suicide a, awareness. Was it awareness? Because I, I, I think just, okay. That, I, let's go back, but I think it look. was suicide awareness. Which I'm can, like, this is not very suicide assistance. Assistance. Oh, oh that's fucking oh. weird. Oh. So it's like so they're cavorting like a, it up. Yeah, like, like a, the, a future. That's what in they which... think 2009 is. Is just like suicide assistance all over the fucking place. And it was, and I looked at it. It was like it felt like it was written in the Coke font. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, oh, yeah. suicide is as big as Coke in 2009. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which it was. And why Battery Park is so close to Park Slope, right? No. Well, no. I mean, they're just across, right? Oh, 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 yeah. I mean, not, yes, yes, And yes. yet, Battery Park is trees. So, Tony. Because, yeah, it's just bizarre that Park they're not Slope, sharing as you all same. know, as New Yorkers, is not a nice place to live. No. <laughs> Park Slope, Park Slope, between being, like, in Hal, Hal Ashby's The Landlord, like a very downtrodden neighborhood to 2009 in this movie, Wait. undergoes, like, a real up and down. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we talk about Fabergé eggs? Yeah, that is... You know what? In 80s movies, they're always 
stealing Fabergé eggs. Risky yeah. business out Risky of Fabergé business, egg. yeah. There, I feel like there's been other Fabergé eggs. I feel like... Okay. But <laughs> when did we our Fabergé as a cult... Eggs, do you know, like, our Fabergé eggs, they're not made of... They're not eggshells, right? No! Right, yeah, that's egg crack crunch like a, so easily. Yeah. Like, he's like, get out of my office, god damn it. I'm like, but, what? Yeah, no, I, I, like, I feel like that would be a heavy... Yeah. We're Fabergé eggs. Like, just yeah. catch it and then put it back though. on your desk. Yeah. Yeah. They... Maybe a jewel falls right. out of it. But it's intact. Yeah, that it, fell it, apart. It, that fell, I mean, maybe the side plot is that he bought some bad Fabergé eggs. Yeah. <laughs> why did, why have we decided... It. My kid made that! <laughs> <laughs> Why have we decided that Fabergé eggs are a, the, the universal symbol of something priceless? I think my, my relatives in South Philly had a couple of those Fabergé eggs. Wait, no. what? No. Yes, right? No, no, no. Wow. With like the Limoges, no. you know, like, they like did the not. shepherd girl. With and a shepherd girl? No, they had like Yadro figurines. Yadros, that's what that, isn't that the same as a Fabergé egg? What are you? You're acting like or you've like a, seen one. Where have you seen a Fabergé egg? Where? Your family never like, imported them. No from family Greece. has. Nobody has Fabergé eggs. Yeah. Have you lost your mind? You're saying like, oh, my family had Fabergé eggs and Hummel figurines. Same. <laughs> Are you insane? That is categorically impossible. <laughs> Fabergé eggs are Google something it, Paul. that Google only... Google it, I did. I did. How fucking expensive eggs is a Fabergé egg? were made between 1885 and 1917. Okay. They were made for uh, the Russian czars, Alexander III, Nicholas II, as Easter gifts for their wives and mothers. How many uh, of them are in South Philly? <laughs> they... Just a quick count. How many are currently in South Philly? You don't know where I come South from. Philly? I will tell you this. So there are 65 known Fabergé okay, eggs. Okay, I get it. Oh, now. okay, great. great. And Only one of them is 57 in my house. have survived to the present day. Yeah. Okay. 10 are displayed in the Kremlin. Okay, um, okay. So that leaves how okay. many? That oh, leaves some so 40 I'm so odd. Wrong. So, oh, yes, I'm you are so wrong. So wrong. I'm so You're sorry. incredibly wrong. I'm you so are sorry. outrageously wrong. <laughs> Wait a second. Said, Wait a you second. You just said on the podcast, I think my family in South Philly has. A couple, a couple of Fabergé eggs at their own in South Philly. Let me just say something. Yins don't have any Fabergé eggs in South Philly. Um, I will say that Wikipedia... Don't worry about it, hon. Wikipedia does account for every single one, but... Uh, except for one! <laughs> there is one that was just found in the um. U.S., at Grandma St. Clair's house. And bought by oh. a private collector. Uh, the third Imperial Easter it's egg you. of 1887. It's, you. it's, it's not it's me. You that has it's not it. me. I'm allergic to eggs. You have it. That's the irony. <laughs> you just yeah. sit there petting it. Oh, my egg. Oh, you, you hatched tonight. So are we, are we convinced that, there, that you don't have any Fabergé eggs? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any we settled that? Do we want to, should we get your South Philly family on the phone? <laughs> They're like, you know they're like, oh, Jessica, those are some, like, what are they, tender memories or what are those called? Yes, that's what I'm thinking. When you go to Hallmark, to the Hallmark store, yeah. you're just like... When you go to the Hallmark store and you buy a Fabergé egg. <laughs> I put... I when, put you go, my... when you go to a Spencer Gifts and you get a, a Fabergé egg and you put it on your mantle like a fucking moron, have you lost your mind? I put my Fabergé egg next to my, um, next to my statue of Jesus playing hockey. Yeah. It's really, it's really Yeah, next to, my, next to my trophy that says most meals with dad. <laughs> a trophy I earned. Fine. Guys, we're having fun. God. What if, what if when he grabbed the egg, he was like, I got this from the Sinclair family in South <laughs> Philly. <laughs> you guys don't know. That's, isn't that one of the, uh, one of the, um, one of the new plot lines of the next Indiana Jones movie? Yeah. <laughs> is that, is that Indiana Jones is trying to break into a house in South Philly <laughs> to fucking get yeah, one of the only <laughs> unaccounted for Fabergé eggs? <laughs> We may have our couches covered in plastic still, but we also have Fabergé eggs. Suck my dick. Um, you're, you're living a lie. <laughs> there are two characters that I want to talk about, and I feel like um, I'll just play this clip, and then we'll talk about it. Um, Ugh, here we go. I have to watch this again. <laughs> Great. Oh, 
The river rat. This oh guy, the river rat. The, the ancient riddle. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> Have you ever seen an eagle flying back to his home with dinner from the missus and all the little eagle babies? And he's flying against the wind, and he's flying in rain, and he's flying through bullets and all kinds of hell. And then right at that moment, that he's about to get back to his nest. He says, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> it's a drag being an eagle. <laughs> and right then, two little exes comes across his eyes just like in the old-fashioned cartoons. And he goes plunging down, and down, and down, and bam! It's just a splatter of feathers. And then we don't have the national bird of America. Did you ever see that? No. Me neither. Eagles By the way, that's clearly a reshoot scene, right? Yes. That oh, was yeah. a scene that they were like, uh, that fills up two minutes. All right, great. <laughs> that what? monologue means nothing to the movie. What does it mean? Amazing. It means nothing. Nothing, right? I am it's, adding yeah. that to my list of monologues that I do at auditions. Yes. <laughs> In addition to the one from Miami Connection from about the guy that gets the letter. Yes. Uh, and now this, because these are unbelievable. I, that that guy, I mean, the river rat guy. I mean, it literally like, I can't think of a scene that has less to do with anything. <laughs> there is, it's just sort of like a character moment. It's a weird. Yeah. Like, what do you think he's telling? What's what, the what, metaphor? Yeah, what's I he can't trying to communicate? It out. Yeah, I, I don't know. Does anybody know, nerds? Uh, hold, hold on, on like, hold on. Let's someone, go to this guy. This guy really looks like a. Sweat. He's wearing a shirt with a button down, I'll so he looks pretty mic. cool. Say your name. Uh, Max. Max, okay. What does the monologue of a river rat mean? So he's sitting next to him, and he's complaining, and he's like, oh, I was in the river, I'm all wet. And he's like, here's an eagle that's got a bad too, that's struggling, and it like feels sorry for itself for a second, and then it dies. There's not really a connection there, but that's what he's That telling. doesn't have, he's but, saying, don't that do that. Sense. And he's like, you gotta like, so he's up, saying, you're gonna die too. He's saying, you're the eagle, you're gonna die? No, if he you says. Feel sorry for yourself and you sit here and you give up. Ah, I see. Right, I but, see. Okay. but we still have a national bird because the eagle doesn't give up. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. We what? Wow. Say it again. USA. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Could this whole thing have not been this monologue? And could he have just come upon him and he, and he Frankie Faison, could have gone, USA, USA. <laughs> and it would have done the same but thing. But to me, yeah. this movie is like Infinite Jest. You do need to like watch a scene, read a little <laughs> bit about it, like get to the bottom there's of a it. Lot, there's a lot of footnotes. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the Honestly, other guy I, I swear to God, about. not one person in this room has read Infinite Jest. My brother's favorite. Book. You other, fucking nerds. You're lying. Yeah. You are li that, those people that clapped are liars. It's like 2,000 pages, isn't it? Yeah. It's like 7,000 pages. Yeah. Yeah. It never ends. Um, but the other and I'm just waiting about... for that sequel. <laughs> oh, Jason. What? We, got... we shouldn't talk about it. We, I talk... I'm waiting oh. for that sequel. Oh, Jason. No, oh, Is Jason. No, him? oh, no. No? No, it's not. DFW, where's oh, no. that sequel? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Uh, the other guy I want to talk about is it's Nick It's called Jack Finite Jest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pamphlet. Is... I do know he's dead. <laughs> the guy who works with Mick Jagger, who has the one lens sunglass? Yeah, is that, and by is, the way, is that, is that Eastside yeah. Morales? Both eyes work. Yeah, well, I that was the reveal. I thought he was gonna have no eye. That's I, crazy. I thought, like, that would be great. And they position it like, ba ba. It's like, oh, yeah. he's got both eyes. Because you know what I thought to myself is, that's a great idea if you don't have an eye, pop out a lens, and then you don't have to worry about tying on a patch, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But nope. no, but I, that was just a fashion statement again. Because for you, for you, a lot of the stress would be the tying on of the patch. Yeah. Yeah. Because you got it. Maybe it's too tight. 
You know? Well, spoilers for the new Thor movie, but that patch just seems to sit there somehow without anything going around or anything. That's weird. Yeah, which That's I thought magic. was weird. That's magic. Because everything else in the movie makes total sense. <laughs> um, we should get to the audience. So obviously, we have a lot of points, but I want to come to the audience, see what they have to think, and I'm going to ask you your name, and who would you free jack? And your question, okay? So, Paul, think about, Paul yeah. so just a quick question. Just so we're clear, what is the definition of free jack? I and I only say would... this, I only say this because people can interpret it a couple of ways. Oh, yeah, not sexually. Don't free jack anyone okay. sexually. Because I've got some, I've got a quick list of people I'd like to free jack. Nobody wants to no, hear this it. this is just... Whose body Nobody would you wants like to, to hear jump it. into? Whose well, body would that, exactly. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking that about. That still oh. sounds bad. That's, that's a lot of what I'm talking... Now, via okay, what... Okay, no, well, we gotta, I'll show you a picture of what I mean versus you know what? what you mean. I'm going to send you some websites. Uh, all of you, click on them. <laughs> Just blind click on everything I send. Your name? Uh, my name's Ryan. Okay, and who would you like to free jack? Um, I would like to free jack... Oh, wow, this is hard. Um... Uh, Jason Manzuka. He's not dead, though. All right. Wait, does that Wait, mean... My, so you, my, have to, you have to know a, it has to be a dead you, you'd person? Have, you, you know, no, that makes sense, because we. You, you'd have to... The person has to be about to die to free jack them. Right, and you are about... You are on death's door. <laughs> I am? <laughs> Wait a minute. What's her name again? Ryan. What do you know? <laughs> All right, Ryan is going to free jack Jason Manzuka. Your question. Wait, what? You told me there was nothing at the end okay, of this so. movie. Wait, so was he supposed to be doing... Who? An American accent? I wonder if they did an American accent and then it didn't work and they ADR'd his lines with his accent. Well, that's the thing, because if you listen to the movie, his accent sounds absolutely bizarre, but when you see that he has a dialogue coach, you're like, maybe he was trying to go... He was pulling the Emilio Estevez at the end move, where it's like, I'm kind of here and I'm kind of there. It feels like that's why his lines were a little sheepish, if you will. Like, it was like, I'm not fully here to commit to that. But why would he have to I don't have know. an accent? That is cryptic. That is, that is worth... A, that's a Blake Harris question. Yeah. All right. Wait, yes. can I ask a question of, of this girl whose name I've forgotten again? Aaron. It's Ryan. Ryan? 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 It's a mutual name, so it's weird. Ryan, it, what are you exactly planning to do with my body once uh, you have it? We'll find out. Now uh, I'm getting creeped out. I'm going uh, over the other geez. side. The that audience. took a turn. Great question, Ryan. Took a turn. Great question. Yeah. All right, sir, what's your name? Who would you like to free jack in your question? My name's Dana, and I would free jack Kathy Ireland right before she made... Uh, necessary roughness because I think that killed her career. Wow. Oh. Kathy Ireland? Is that what you said? Her underwear's wow. okay. Kathy Ireland, her, maybe her acting career, but her, her, her career is enormous. She's wildly successful. Hey, and look, I mean, don't like. Don't judge a people's jack, okay? Okay, people all right. Free jack to you're right, you're want. right. Don't judge the jack. Don't judge the jack. Judge the game. All right, so here we go. All right, so Mick Jagger does the handprint lie detector with the gentleman with the one-eyed lens, yeah. setting up what we think towards the end when we have the switcheroo, it could come back into play. What happened to it? Well, I think what we've established is that he doesn't want, he wants them to get away. He doesn't want to prove that and right, you're saying he could have Emilio Estevez put his hand on it and say, who are you? I don't think he, he helps he, he wants him lie. To help. He wants to help him lie. Uh, we still so I think don't that's know why. why. I, although I would be willing to guess if, if that machine came back in the 40% of reshoots. Because why set it up to not have it uh, come back again? What somehow. I was hoping was going to come back was Mick Jagger playing video games. The most yeah. simplistic video game 
it, like, video games took a step back from 1992 <laughs> in a major way. It was like, do, 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 do. It was like Pong. And he was, and I didn't see Mick Jagger's character being like, ugh, <laughs> tough day of bone jacking. Let me just get on my video game machine and, and just crank a couple out. Uh, sir, your name, your free jack, and your question. Uh, I'm Matt. I would free jack the league. I'm like in the season. The, you'd free jack a TV show? <laughs> Boy, we're having a lot of problems with our free jacks. <laughs> okay, so this illustrates a central problem. Right, we don't know what it is. That people fundamentally don't understand free jacking <laughs> to a degree that this guy, keep in mind, back row of the balcony, <laughs> would like to free jack a TV show that is no longer on the air. Yeah. Okay, sir, you'll free jack a TV show. Your question. Uh, can we talk about that taxi driver in the beginning? Hang on, hang on. I have a second question. <laughs> now. First of all, yes, you, I'm his voice coach. You, you sound foreign. Uh, yeah, I'm from Australia. Oh, God. <laughs> Well, you dildos won't come out, so I've got to come in. Okay, fair enough. Did you come here just for this? I may have stayed a little bit longer just for this. Okay, good. I'll take it. Great. Well done. Did anybody travel from farther than Australia for this show? Where? Philly. Philly. That's the perfect answer. Where's your egg? Show us your Show egg. Show us your egg. Show us your eggs. Show us your eggs. Show us your eggs. Just kidding. Just kidding. We know they're in your ovaries. <laughs> but if you jump into Jessica, you can also get one of her <laughs> eggs. All right. Wait, I don't remember the taxi driver. So uh, when Emilio lands into the, the future, he yeah? gets into this taxi. He has to give the guy the watch. And then he figures out that he's a free jack. And then he starts to shoot him. He tries to kill him, and the Emilio outruns a bullet because he's an A1 race driver, I guess. I remember this. It was, yeah, I don't know, know why the Australian wanted to know about it because it is a pointless scene and a pointless <laughs> character, but you know what? Australians. <laughs> your name, who you want to free Jack? That's right. Question. I'm going to war with Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Mel, and I would probably free Jack Oscar Wilde. Right. He's already dead! All right. Whoa, hey, okay. hey, Mel. Whoa, whoa, hey, Mel. whoa. I feel like you were going real good, and then it just, it, yeah. we, like, Emilio Estevez <laughs> just crashed into the wall. Hey, <laughs> Mel, quick question. Are you mad at us? This movie is making everybody upset. No, <laughs> yeah. But my question is, do you think this is Emilio Estevez's version of The Wraith with Charlie Sheen? Because it's so ridiculous. What is the year? What year was the race? Oh, it's five. Oh, it's a bunch of years later. What's that? It's what's Char the race? What's that? It's Charlie also, Sheen's riding it's a, Charlie a dragon Sheen. or something. Wait a minute. What do you think it is? Charlie C Sheen rides a dragon. Yeah. Yep. Let's. That's we'll what go a with that. Is. We'll go with that. That's Charlie what Sheen a is. rides a dragon. Is it it? Yep. That's what it is. That's what a race is. Do me a is. favor. Rent that movie. <laughs> no way. Someone. No, no, it's another like terrible sci-fi movie where Charlie Sheen sort of is in it. What's the Wraith? Yeah, but yeah. He's, he's the Wraith. But oh. what does that mean? The Wraith is like a vengeful spirit that comes back to avenge like a... Great. What? <laughs> I think we all know it's not amazing. Yeah. Your name, who you free jack your question? Uh, my name is Oliver. I'm going to uh, free jack Kate Upton. Oh, come on. Get out of here, Stedman. He looks like Stedman. He kind of looks like Stedman. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm assuming because you want to fuck that baseball player, right? <laughs> Don't, hey, hey, guys. Let's not criticize this guy for wanting to fuck that baseball player. What's his name? Sports guy. Verlander. We get it. You want to fuck sports guy? Don't shame him for that. <laughs> Can we talk about how uh, Free Jack was a prequel to Nundercover with the uh, nun who's Amanda Plummer? packing 
with the New York accent and packing guns all over the place. That was Amanda. That, that's Amanda Plummer, one of the greats. Yeah. Um, What's her name? Amanda Plummer. She was the nun. Okay. She was the nun. Um, I loved when she kicked uh, what's his name in the balls, Michelet. She kicked him so hard in the he balls died. that he like froze for like four seconds and then fell to the yeah. ground. <laughs> All right, front row. This is pressure's on. You got you got a good seat. You were here early. You got a question? Ooh, it better be good. Your name? Who this, you're gonna free, Jack? This better be good. Any question? Oh, the pressure's on. Okay. 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 Good for you. Not that good. Uh, so, uh, right before they go upstairs to the top floor, the 200th floor in that building, when they're escaping, he says, she types in the 100th floor. He's mm-hmm. like, why are we going to the 100th floor? He's like, there's a fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what Rene, Rene Russo says, it's a fire escape on the 100th floor. Right. How, how, is it quicker to go down the fire escape on the 100th floor than just running back out like a back entrance on the first floor? Yeah, that's, that's a, a great, great point. Question. That, you and know I what? think that I want to give you a special award. Is the only at- access to the fire escape on the hundredth floor? Is that what we're? Well, that's my, it. My question is: is that uh, is that anybody who is paying that much logical attention to the movie at that point, you get a special prize? Because yeah, you do. At that point, you're like, whatever. Uh, all right. And I do want to say, while she's making her way in, that guys. You're great. Everybody comes prepared. Yeah. People have got your notes. People have been watching parts of the movie that we're barely paying attention to. I'm talking about these people down here. You fucks are animals. <laughs> but I want to say, great job, audience. New York, you really fucking showed up yeah. for this. Yeah. Well done. Again, I am not talking to you, Balcony, because you are filthy monsters that nobody trusts. Oh. Uh. I did get HPV up there. You what? I got HPV up there. HPV. You got HPV? I'm surprised you only got HPV up there. <laughs> um, okay. Your name, who you'd free Jack, and your question. All right, my name's Bridget. Um, I'd free Jack uh, Jeff Buckley. Okay. Nice. Who? Uh, who? Huh? Who? Jeff Buckley. Oh, yeah, Oh, sure. he's great. Sure, uh-huh. wonderful. <laughs> Finally, wonderful. we find somebody we agree on. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful. And an, an angel on earth. Lost too soon. Um, so, uh, I'm from East Harlem, and so the beginning of the movie when Mick Jagger's in his giant truck, and East Harlem is the safety zone. <laughs> and it is the one part of Manhattan that has not been gentrified. <laughs> and Park Slope, as we mentioned earlier, um, is cobblestone, 1889 style. <laughs> so why? Why? Why, why did that happen? Let's talk about infrastructure. Let's talk about the city. Guys, we'll get into it. This is a great question, and it brings us to the part of the podcast that we all love, urban planning. <laughs> We're talking about Robert Moses. We're talking about the power broker. Guys, please welcome to the stage Leonard Lopate. He's here to tell us all about New York City and how it is changing. Please welcome to the stage Brian Lehrer. Ladies and gentlemen, Manoush Samarodi. Guys, these are all WNYC jokes. You're the only people that get them. The people on the podcast can eat a dick. I once made a Manoush Samarodi joke to dead silence, and I'm so happy. <laughs> you made it in the wrong place. This is where we make those jokes, yeah. baby. <laughs> Sir, your name, who you'd free jack your question? My name is Matt, and I want to free jack anyone but Louis C.K. Oh, oh, too topical, too topical. Topical, Kaboom. topical. Kaboom. Topical. Taking he shots. There, he went there. All right, so Kevin Spacey. Now, <laughs> so your question is what? So, Emilio Estevez is getting chased, and there's all these futuristic cars everywhere, and tanks, and he, a race car driver, commandeers a fucking champagne truck. Yeah. What is a champagne truck, and why did he take that? Yeah, that was really interesting to me, because a champagne truck is so, like, 
ordinary. ordinary. It's comical. It's almost yeah. a comical vehicle. But it's, that was part of the reshoot where they wanted to add humor back into the movie. You are 100% yeah, right. right. I think that's probably I true. I think that's what they did. Yeah, yeah, because nobody drives a truck around with just loose bottles that can yeah. come but, flying but out. But do we, do we live in a world where... Because that, that truck was um, or set up kind of like you see the, um, the water trucks, you know, yeah. the big jugs mm-hmm. of water trucks. Are we to believe that in the <clears throat> few in 2009, champagne is just dispensed into everyone's like champagne's here, right? Like it's set up like the milkman's truck, like that. But poor, it's champagne. Like that poor guy has to eat that dog food in that diner, which I felt so bad for him because oh. you know take after take he had to eat that dog food. That dude had no teeth. I know. He's Are fucking talking- lucky to have that slop. Are you guys talking about the famous pork chop diner? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Pork chop diner. I will say that, uh, speaking of cars in this movie, I'll also just point out the Coke Den car that Rene Russo has, where it's like two white leather couches. Oh, I wanted that so bad. I thought I would look so good in something like that. Why? 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 And an was... egg. It's like a. It's like a leather egg. I missed you something. Can drive around. And I'm sorry. I know we're in the middle of the audience, but what I missed. The Rene Russo's turn from not trusting that he was Alex to believing he was no, Alex. She well, said, a Mi- nipple on your ear, right? No. no, but it was before when Mick Jagger came for Alex. Then she was like, oh shit, that must oh, be. Th- okay, Alex. so that was the. Okay, right. Okay. So that okay. was. Do you remember, the, yeah. Jason, the amazing push freeze frame into her face? Yeah, I yes. guess. That so. was the craziest shot I've ever seen in a movie. Like, really? <laughs> They did two shots of her, like, <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I, I, gotta may, make this I may have been on the toilet for that scene. <laughs> I may have missed it. Obviously, we had an opinion about this movie, but there are people out there that have a different opinion. It is now time for second opinion. I've got a second opinion. You have another opinion. Here's my second opinion. Yeah! Yeah! Valerie, give it up for Valerie. Amazing. But in true New York form, we have another second opinion song. Here we go. Your second opinion song. Gonna draw the curtains, turn off the lights. Gonna log on Amazon tonight. I'm always down for an internet fight. So there is a review I have to write. When you recommend a movie, even though it sucks, <laughs> and you give five stars but zero fucks, <laughs> Paul's gonna find and read your review, and Zeus is gonna tell you that this movie blew. June and the guests will make fun of you too. Sorry, buddy, but the joke's on you. All in good fun. Second opinion. Second opinion. That was amazing. Becky and Valerie, give it up. They're amazing. Thank you both. Holy shit. That was awesome. New York bringing it in the town. Bringing it. I wanted to turn my chair around, you know what I mean? (laughs) Well, I wanted um, to do the voice. I'm Blake, Blake Shelton. You want to do the voice? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, not me. I wanted to turn my... I want to have them on my team. I've never watched it. That was... Uh, that was good. You were spot so, on with it. So yeah. your specifics are turn the chair and her on your team. Yeah. Okay, yeah, you get the voice. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is an interesting movie because there's 84 reviews total. <laughs> And 55% of them are five-star reviews. Wow. Whoa. What? And you can't find... Where are you finding these? Can I ask you a, can't, like, from Amazon. Vic, Vic. You have to buy that movie, right? Well, these are people that are on Amazon that are like... It's like a message board. Yeah, like, whoever, yeah. If they bought it on DVD okay, or if they watched okay. it on the video They don't service. even have to have bought it to comment Yeah, on can it. I ask a quick question from the crowd? Because I think this is maybe one of those things. Who like either from childhood or even now loved this movie oh okay not as not as many as I thought not as many as I thought Um, examine your life and the choices you've made I'm going to just read a couple of them because 
They're so short. Yeah. Um, this one was written um, by Joan Jett, the electric Ooh. guitar hero. Joan Jett? Yes. Wow. And the title of the review is The Lawnmower Man is a Good Movie. Now you would think from the title, the person is confused. But not so much because it goes, now this is one movie I really like. Emilio Estevez plays a very good part in this movie. Give it a view. Five stars. So, Lawnmower Man, wrong title, right actor. Was Emilio mix. Estevez in The Lawnmower no. Man? Okay. So she was just cutting and pasting different subjects. But do you think maybe the virtual reality kind of elements of it is the connection that this person is drawing? I don't know. I don't really, yeah, I don't know. Or is this just like a cry for help? <laughs> I feel like... Suicide assistance. Writing, <laughs> they, were going through their, they were going through a breakup and they're like, you know what, I'm going to review every one of my DVDs on Amazon. They just got confused, <laughs> cut and paste. This one's from Kenneth Deal. Wrote... Good job. Five stars. <laughs> no. I love that. <laughs> C. Willie wrote, another one of those movies that are brought up during talk about movies that you just got to see. Very good movie. Great actors. And very good movie. <laughs> I highly recommend this action-packed Full screen movie. Wow. So this isn't one of those half screen movies. I believe like there is an ESL teacher out there going, your homework is to review movies on Amazon. <laughs> I bet that's amazing. And then finally, this one's from Mary. They all are the same. They all seem like people that have suffered blunt trauma to the head. <laughs> Mary wrote, been looking for this movie for a long time. We'll tell all my friends. Thank you. Five stars. It's as if, you know what I feel like is these are people that have been free jacked. Their brains have been taken from them, leaving behind just the vestige of a body, you know? And, uh, and finally, uh, this one is a one star review, but I wanted to read it because it was kind of great. This piece of crap DVD only plays in my car DVD player. <laughs> Don't waste your money, people. One stop. <laughs> so that's that. Um, as we're wrapping I love, up here, I love that visual of that guy being like, I want to watch Free Jack, but I don't want to just sit in my car. It is now time for a third opinion. This one live from Montreal, Miss June Diane Rayfield. Here we go. Hello, New York City. It's your girl, June. I'm so, well, I'm two things. I'm bummed not to be there because these shows are so much fun. And I'm deeply relieved to not have to watch this motion picture. Um, sometimes it's fun, most of the time it's really hard for me to pay attention. Um, Based on, Paul's asked me to talk about what I think this movie might be about. I know nothing about this film, Free Jack. I've never seen a DVD. I've never seen cover art on iTunes. I've never seen a billboard. I've, I haven't seen anything about Free Jack. So this is truly just uh, a guess based on two words. I'm gonna guess that this film, and I'm really thinking about it right now for the first time, is potentially about a man named Jack who was imprisoned for many, many years, um, maybe wrongfully so, and is, has finished his time and is now out in the world a free Jack and having to readjust and find, you know, the freedom and space in his mind to be a person in the world. And... Um, 
Actually, I feel like I just pitched a movie I'd like to see. <laughs> uh, or maybe it's uh, not an animated, but like live action type film about a, a joker, like a jack and a deck of cards that escapes somehow and um, enters the world. I guess that seems unlikely. Anyway, either way, I'm, I remain thrilled that I didn't have to do this, this movie. Um, and I am wishing you guys a great night, and I hope to be back doing the show in New York City very soon. Bye. I am um, a little visit from June. I will say I do like her pitch for an an a live-action animated movie about a jack who escapes the death of cars. Yeah. Kind of into that. Um, any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Like, we didn't I'm finally, I'm free from the 52. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we didn't discuss that anyone feels like they want to bring? Yes. These are things that I made mention of that I did not get to talk about. Okay. <clears throat> Emilio Estevez gets drunk in a bar. He is one of the most sought after people in town. Gets drunk in a bar and starts talking on television. <laughs> Why? Don't know. Never puts on a costume. Okay, also, when... He there... does put on the hobo costume. Sort of. When, <laughs> when, when Rene Russo takes him to the other guy's kind of safe house. Are there giant feet sculptures in yes. that house? I wrote that down. I couldn't make heads or tails out of that at all. I was, I was a like, very is, ornate safe house. Is this art? Is this what is? I couldn't figure the giant feet sculpture. I, uh, keep my grandma smiling is what the guy says to him when he dies. I wrote um, down... Um, Hard cut to Einstein's face on the yep. wall. Yeah. And I yes. felt like that Einstein face, it was like, intelligence isn't important, imagination is. And I felt like that was the director going, see? Like, <laughs> that, that makes up for any of that shit. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but I came up with that, and I should be getting something for that. We have, we have not given uh, an appropriate shout out to David Johansson. <laughs> Who I only want to hear give exposition. All right, kid, here's the deal. You're free, Jacka. Then take your body and then we go out. Hey, all right. Like the one same of my character from Scrooge. Absolute favorite people. New York Dolls, uh, all of it. So great. Great to see him. Uh, but I feel like I'm louder than I was before, and I'm not sure why. Um, why to... is um, Anthony Hopkins dressed? in a Mark Twain costume at the end. Yeah. That's a question. I also like the casual Skyping of Anthony Hopkins. When he's in the car, he's like kind of looking out the window. He's like, oh, hi. Um, yeah. I want to say this. And then he's like, okay, great. Back out the window. Like, Wait, why do I have this written down? Some of my notes read like a haiku. Why are they saran wrapping him and also what the fuck? They put, oh, wait, after they learned, were trying to lobotomize him, they, like, put a whole thing of saran wrap on top of him. That's how that yeah, scene ended. I don't remember that either. Oh, yeah, I do remember that saran yeah, wrap thing. They're, like, trying to keep him contained or something? I don't know. Yeah, like, hold him, yeah. Yeah. Susan know. saran wrap. Um, oh, here is, um... What did you just say? Hmm? All right, Nothing. we have to, we have to wrap up. What did you just say? I didn't say anything. We got to wrap up the show, but, um... What did you just say? They heard me. Oh... Avril Halley found, uh, Avril Halley, who cuts all of our video clips, she Woo! noticed something, that they take the James Brown scream from yes, I Feel Good. Yes, I noticed that too. So here it is, uh, kind of cut in in full. So, that's a treat. That, the existence of a champagne truck continues to confound me. And that visual alone... I mean, Mick Jagger must, like, this must haunt him. 
<laughs> he, he did so time. few movies. He, he did time. so few things, and this is one of them. Um, all right, so we watch these movies for the reason of doing this podcast. They're fun, bad movies. But would you recommend... <laughs> and apparently we hate ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> would you recommend this movie for this purpose, to enjoy this movie on this level? Is it fun, bad? Is it interesting to watch? Phoebe, what, what do you think? Fun, bad, absolutely. Because yeah. I need to talk to someone about this. This is fucking ruining my day. <laughs> It ruined my entire day, so I got to bitch about it with someone. Uh, yeah. So, and I think that's the, that's the appropriate response. Um, <laughs> Jessica, what do you think? This was bad, bad, and I feel like this, however long it was, was like An probably hour 45. eight yeah. barefoot Contessa episodes I could have watched back to back and learned real skills about a Can chicken ask- piccata, and instead I'd watch this piece of shit Can I ask and a be question? made to feel sick. Can I ask a real question? Fuck you. Is she barefoot? <laughs> never. Never. So that's you a, never so see the show her from its title is a lie. That's right. She's wearing shoes. Always. Always. You never see her feet. You never you don't want to. Then I'm to. not gonna watch it. I only want to watch ladies cook while barefoot. Uh, you have one of those foot sculptures at home in your house? Yeah, you know I do. <laughs> Jason? I, I'm pretty much no on this. You know what? It would be yes if Emilio Estevez was more charismatic. If, 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 if it wasn't Emilio Estevez... <laughs> did somebody just have a pro... Is Emilio Estevez here? Um, there is something like... I think like that if, Bruce Willis perfected that, like, it, every guy... Action right, here, but it's not his Emilio's fault. He was the script in, is bad, guys. Yeah. Oh, Wait, let me be very Bernie's. clear. <laughs> this is Emilio? a abysmal movie. It's not his fault. And it's, it's not like his fault. It would be lines, more fun if Nicolas Cage was in this part. It would be more. It would be more fun if Kurt Russell was. It would just be more fun. That's all I yeah. mean. Uh, um, he is kind of negative energy, and so it it feels more draggy than I want it to. Yes. That's kind of what I mean. And I don't think that would make it a good movie. It would just make it more fun to watch. That's I'm in all. the agreement of that. I feel like it was, it's, there's interesting things in it, but not, it's not to be, yeah, unless you're doing it for this purpose, not to be watched. <laughs> um, the tagline of this movie was, time flies, but to survive in the year 2009, or 2009, they'll uh, need is- to move a lot faster. That makes that no is sense. Clumsy. That makes as little sense is, as yeah. the movie that does. That is yeah. very clumsy. The other one was, don't let the future pass you by. Nope. No, boo. Nope. nope. That, those are bad. Um, and just to put it in perspective, this movie came out in 1992. The top three movies were Aladdin, Home Alone 2, and Batman Returns. Uh, this came in 71st out of all the movies. It was beaten by Lawnmower Man, Sleepwalker, Stop or My Mom Will Shoot, and Toys. Um, do you think... Do you think in this movie, in the future now, you, do you consider Emilio Estevez and Rene Russo to be, like, peers? Like, now that they're together, are they the same age? In th- I know they're not, but, like... They're going to live as such. Gonna, I think they're going to have trouble. That oh, yeah. 18-year age difference is going to be work out. real problem for them. And where are they going to live? Battery How are they going to live in that antique car? Yeah. Who's going to drive, drive, drive and nibble each other's ears until they eat each other? Ugh, um, I don't care for that either. either. Nibble, I don't like it nibble, at all. Like, like the least sexual thing, nibble my ear. Ugh. Ugh. Ears are almost as gross as feet. Not except for barefoot contestants. Yeah. Um, Phoebe, what do you want to plug? You have so much cool stuff going on. You're currently on tour right now. Yes, I'm on a stand up tour with Alana Glazer, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you have a new show coming out to HBO? Yeah, we're doing, uh, Jessica Williams and I are doing four Two Dope Queens HBO specials that come out next year. And, uh, yeah, that's it. It's great. And your yeah. book is fantastic. If Aww. you have not read her book, it's amazing. I actually just lent it to a friend because I think oh, it's so good. Oh, thanks, Paul. No problem. And then, Jessica, what do you want to plug? Um, we got Womp It Up coming back. Nice. November 25th, I think. And uh, the last season of Playing House was something I'm really proud of. And so you can get that on iTunes or Amazon. I'm not really sure how to get it. I couldn't find it. Um, But good luck. 
I'm sure it's. I, I'm sure you can buy it on iTunes. I think you can. Yeah, but go buy it. No, be all right. Go buy it on iTunes. All right, go do and it. And Jason, um, uh, I voice a character on the TV show Big Mouth that is on <laughs> that is on Netflix currently. If you can imagine a world in which I play a 13 year old boy who fucks his pillow, <laughs> then get on board for this show. And um, I play your brother, who's totally cool. That's true. Um, yeah, then that's about it. And uh, I'll plug a movie that Jason, June, and I are all in. It's called The Disaster Artist, coming oh, yeah. out in a couple of weeks. Uh, James Franco as Tommy Wiseau. And it's all about the making of The Room. An interesting fact about it is that our podcast of The Room with Greg Sestero was used as research in writing the script of the actual movie. So, so. Um... Thank you all so much for coming. We love you, New York.